Ever notice how a lot of narcissistic people are highly competitive with you all the time? Like there's this never ending push and pull and competition for everything in life. So today we're gonna to talk about that. My name is Lise Colucci. I am here to help you understand, heal from and transform your life after toxic relationships and narcissistic people have been in it. So hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. If, if you need coaching, group coaching or peer support, check out the information in the description of every video. There's links there to help you get the help you need. All right, you guys, competitive narcissists. So a narcissist is competitive in the weirdest ways. They compete for everything because they are always having to control the show, right? They're having to be the one who dictates, the one who conducts, the one who controls everything and everyone around them. So if they see someone sad, they have to be sadder. If you get your feelings hurt by them, well, they got their feelings hurt even worse by you. If you do really well at work, they have to do really well at work and play. If you if you make a friend, they have to make five friends. Have you noticed this in your life with a narcissistic person in it? It's super annoying, okay? And it's really hard not to engage in that because it's sort of this natural instinct in relationship to go back and forth and like oh you did this oh i did this and you know it, it sort of has this addictive feel to it when you're around a narcissistic person even oftentimes for people who aren't competitive like myself <laughs> right it can be really difficult to just gray rock that nonsense because it has a pull to it especially when they're using it to gaslight so if you have your feelings hurt or your emotions hurt or whatever they're doing to you, right? When they're emotionally manipulating you and you tell them that really hurt my feelings, that made me really upset. They're not gonna say, I'm sorry. They're oftentimes not going to ask you why or tell, say more about that or have an actual conversation about it. What they're gonna do instead is either dismiss you or flip the script, right? Where it's them that is the one that is hurt and not only are they hurt but they're hurt worse than you were and so it has this feeling of competition to it and this feeling of competitive needs right well if you have a need i have twice the need is what they say and what that really is is that you're taking attention and time for yourself and that is an absence to them a vacancy of supply when they feel that vacancy of supply because somebody is applying focus towards themselves, they get mad, right? And they get reactive and they get childish and they start needing to start pulling on you and getting the focus back on themselves. And so it's this instantaneous whirlwind gaslighting that flips everything around and the competition's on. And then the entire discussion turns into an argument where there's gaslighting because you're going, wait a minute, how are you hurt? Because it's, what are you gonna say, right? Someone is super manipulative to you, super toxic, they're gaslighting you for 45 minutes and you say, wow, I'm really feeling hurt. My, my, my feelings are feeling bad or whatever you say, right? And they say, your feelings are bad. Well, how do you think I feel? And you're thinking, well, you wouldn't feel bad if you hadn't started this whole crazy, gaslighting whirlwind, right? If we had just talked about the thing, whatever it was, it wouldn't be this big a deal. So the first thing you're going to say most likely is, what do you mean you're hurt? You're the one who created this problem, or I'm sure you are hurt. This has been really bad and you'll play into giving them the attention or you get mad and walk away. Whatever you do, it doesn't matter at that point they get the supply because they have dismissed everything with this competitive me type of thing, right? That pulls the attention back to them. And that's only one example. I mean, they do it in the positive too, right? Like if you have something great happen in your life and they have to have five things great happen in, to them, or at least talk about five great things about themselves so that the focus goes off you and onto them. It's always about the vacancy of supply in that moment because your focus is where it ought to be on your life, okay? There is a way to focus on your life and include others. That's called using empathy, compassion, you know, sympathy, kindness, and the outpouring of self 
to create relationship. If both people are doing that, beautiful. But when you have a narcissist, it's about you're doing that, they're taking. And when you're depleted and empty or you're excited because something actually happened to you that you want to share, they can't handle it because there's a vacancy of supply because you're the one getting focused, because you're the one with an achievement. And they have to steal that, get competitive, and create problems in the process. So is it worth it to be competitive with a narcissist or is it better to gray rock in that situation or walk away if you can, right? So you let me know what you think. My personal feeling, gray rock that if you have to be around them. Say, oh, great, those are, that's five great things about you. Mm -hmm. And go tell someone else the wonderful thing that happened to you. Stop giving them your information that they can use against you and give it to people who actually care. And if it's a negative, just gray rock it and just be like, yeah, I know your feelings must be hurt. That was tough. Walk away. It is not worth the engaging. It's never going to come to resolve. That's the problem. All right. Let me know what you think, you guys, about narcissists and their competitive nature and how it affects you. And what are your stories of competitive narcissists in your life? Let me know in the comments. You guys hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.